ask you um, to talk a, a little bit about the actual process of songwriting. Sure. Uh, some of you guys out there are writing songs, I hope. Yeah. Um, what novelists always get asked is, where do you get your ideas? I get that one too. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not going to ask you that, but I will ask you something you've probably been asked 147,000 times, which is, do you get the words first or the melody? <laughs> It's true. It is the it's the question that everyone wants to know the answer to, and uh, I do too. Actually, I'd like to know the answer because I'm not sure. Um, I think I begin every song. I begin with um, the fear that I don't know how to do it, that um, that I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm a fraud, and, uh, and the process of trying to remember how to write a song is actually how the song gets written. Sometimes it's like that. Um, sometimes I have these moments, I think like a lot of writers, of a flush of inspiration and it's a gift. But for the most part, I think it's mostly work. But I also get great comfort from writing. I get um, uh, just carrying a song around with me for sometimes years at a time. I work on them in my head. I'll have the melody kind of established in the framework at some point, um, whichever has come first. And it'll fill in, it'll become sort of the structure of something, and then, um, and then I walk around with it for, for as long as it takes. And sometimes I become really attached to them. They're good company. It's, it's comforting company, I think, to have something. Yeah, your characters in the novel are good company. I bet they are. I've often wondered that. You must, you must feel so strange to finish, and then... Yeah, then, then they go away. They go away. You don't have yeah. them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Everything's empty. Do you ever go back? Do you reread re and think about? Do you think of them as still existing? Do they go on without you? Some of them, yeah, they do go on without me. Wow. Yeah. I, do your songs go on without me? Some of them do, yeah, yeah, for sure. Some of the characters I think of as, yeah, as I, I occasionally go, I wonder what, huh? Wait, they're not real. <laughs> when, when you're in that horrible moment when you're not sure that you know how to do it, um, most characteristically are you not doing anything? Do you have a guitar in your hands? Are you yeah. sitting in front of a computer? Do you have a piece of paper? What, uh... I think all of those things, but I, I mean, I, <laughs> not at the same time, but all the same time. But I, I think I, I became, I'm not, a, I'm not adept at the guitar, I'm not particularly musical person, actually. But I'm really um, extremely familiar with my instrument, the guitar, so I often just carry it around and, I, and it feels natural for me to hold it and to play it. Um, but I don't know anything about it, really. I don't know um, the words for the chords, for the most part, if someone tells me to play um, a D minor sus or something else. I can do it, but I, it takes me about 20 minutes to think it through. <laughs> um, so, but, I'm sorry I got off track, but it's like, like uh, I think just it's a comfortable thing for me to do just to fool around on the guitar and it's, a, it's something that just I feel is a natural thing. But um, so often it just starts that way and I'll get just the framework or something. And then I usually have to leave the house. In the last 10 years or so I have to leave and get away from the internet. Because um, I can't, I just don't do anything if there's the internet there. <laughs> the, what you just said, this, this is a sideways motion. I hope okay. you guys will forgive the sideways motion. Reminds me of something I heard Veda Hilly say uh, when she was giving a talk. Um, she said she was too good at the piano, so she took up the uh, tenor guitar because she wasn't good at it. Right. Uh, does that resonate for you? It does, it does, yeah. And I, I can see Beta saying that because she's, um, you know, a world-class pianist. But, um, and, and her tenor guitar songs are, um, you know, you can tell they're not, she's not as fluent with the instrument, but the framework and the musical mind is still there. And it's, yeah, and sometimes you do, you need to shake, I think you need to shake things up a little bit. So I've written on the piano, which I play incredibly poorly. <laughs> I only play the white keys. <laughs> you know those black keys, people use them. <laughs> no, I don't. And, um, so, uh, and, you know, this is not, this, not to encourage an anti intellectualism or an anti performance, anti, anti learning of music, but I just, there's, my wife is a, is a very good piano player. There's piano, there's two pianos in the house, so 
often go to that as a kind of a way to move things around in my head. And little Casio keyboards, I'm very fond of as well. <laughs> I've written for them. And then they become transposed by, by the band, actually, a band. I was very interested to hear you talking about the one Icelandic liturgy. Oh yeah. Because um, it seems to me that many of your songs come from a speech center. Mm -hmm. Because they're so lyric driven that the, the speech is actually intensified in the melody. Does that, does that make sense? That does. I've never thought of it that way. But I think that's, I think that's true. I think I'm always looking for that feeling I got as a, as a, as a tiny kid of, of that, of that uh, combination of um, that liturgy, the, what that means, yeah. Even af long after losing religion, I've still clung to that feeling, yeah. I knew exactly what I wanted to ask you, and this <laughs> vanished <laughs> off my head. Um, you talked for a minute. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But process, I often I have to work at the library, and being here this week, I've been I've been um, I, it's kind of felt good to me. I like to work in places where other people are working, like it makes me feel like part of the hive or something. We're all <laughs> working together, and um, and I find that so I work at the library a lot. I put headphones on, but I don't put any music on, so people won't talk to me. But um, <laughs> but I, I do I think. It's weird, but yeah, the last, I get, keep getting further and further away from home as a, as a writer, like the literal place. Like, I have my carol at the, at the library. And, yeah, it's, 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 it came back to me. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think in, in um, structural terms, like um, a verse chorus, mm -hmm. um, yeah. how much do those structural considerations play in your mind? They matter to me musically, but not lyrically. Like I've always kind of, um, again, that punk rock idea of you have this much time to say something and you can't waste it. So that's kind of been so ingrained in my head that I can't really write a chorus. People often complain that. Whereas the chorus, you just say something different every time. <laughs> so, um, and fair enough, I like <laughs> But choruses can be great. I mean, I think, I think the, the repetition is, a, is an incredibly musical, it's a, it's a trope that works really well, I think that's the whole the structure of it, but, um, what was I going to say? But musically it matters to me, yeah, like I, you know, my songs are pretty simple, they're almost ready made, right, like they're, they're, they're folk songs really, and, and there's nothing remarkable about them musically, they're, they're songs that anyone with a familiarity with the guitar could write, and, and they're, um, similar to the structures of thousands and thousands of songs. So I think of that as a valuable tool for a writer. Like it's this, it's like poetic forms that I'm also interested in, like the sonnet and right. and um, and uh, like Elizabeth Paczynski, who um, teaches here, uh, um, wrote two beautiful villanelles that I've been super jealous of for years. So I'm hoping next time here she's here and she'll teach me how to write one. But like the yeah, oh she's here, she's here. <laughs> <laughs> So after you'll help me write a villanelle. Okay. <laughs> but I so I, I'm really see like I think that that's that's this kind of the same as approaching a kind of folk song. And it's using these kind of ready-made structures that have been um, passed down to us that are that are gifts to us, uh, us as artists and writers too. Um, yeah. So I'm interested in those. I remember hearing an interview with Leonard Cohen who was talking about how the form, particularly if there are rhymes in it, can force you into wonderful spaces you'd never find otherwise. I really agree, yeah. Yeah, and the, I, the rhyme is really powerful for me as, a, as both a, a poet, um, though I don't write many poems that are just poems, and as a songwriter, like, like just what they can do, uh, what they can force um, sentiments and, and words into. Do you have um, standard chord progressions you work with? Yeah, I have certain voicings I think that are kind of specifically mine in a way. I think a lot of a lot of songwriters do. You can sort of hear them like return to the same um, 
sort of ideas. I, I write pretty much always in a major key. Um, I write. You don't like write minor songs? I do. I don't know why I don't. No. Yeah, it's strange. I, I mean, I theoretically like the idea of writing. Maybe they make you say that. Maybe they make you say that. Yeah, maybe, maybe I want something that distracts. I want, I want the, I want the sentiment tamped down a bit. I want the, right, the plaintive right. sadness tamped down a bit. You're right. So I want this kind of cheerful, almost cheerful, um, vessel for <laughs> my despair. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear other, other uh, voices when you write? Do you hear the bass line? Do you hear a drum pattern? Or do you hear, uh, you know? I don't know. Really. Yeah, I don't. I think, and that's why I've been lucky to surround myself with really talented musicians who flesh things out. Um, I wouldn't want to do this every night. I think the songs um, become something else when other people are part of them. And the collaboration is an important part of the process for me. Um, collaboration with both, you know, the musicians and the audience, in a way. Yeah, for sure. I actually had a request from an oh. audience member. Oh. It, was actually, it was actually Liz Machinsky. Oh, no. <laughs> asked me to ask you about your publishing house. Oh, cool, yeah. Well, I started, uh, um, I helped start ARP Press, ARP Books back. Um, it was actually the same month I started the week of those, so they're, they're twinned together in my mind. And um, we called it Arbiter Ring Publishing, which um, is kind of connected to our to the, the history of activism in Winnipeg. The, the Arbeiter Ring was um, mostly German Jewish uh, organization of it was an umbrella organization of all different groups on the left and a way for them to kind of collaborate and work together. And they they did things like they brought Emma Goldman to speak in Winnipeg. And, yeah, I don't know. So they did all these incredible things and we just kind of wanted some kind of connection to the activist history of Winnipeg because it's a very, um, it's a political place uh, and political, politics are right at the surface of, of life in Winnipeg. And, and so I always really loved books and, and um, a friend of mine was working at a publishing house in Winnipeg and we were both suddenly unemployed. I had just um, sort of left or been removed from <laughs> however we want to say. It was a mutual decision. <laughs> no, it was, uh, I mean, it was both. It was, I had to go, I had to leave that band that I was in, and then Todd was uh, um, leaving the publishing house he was working for, so we thought, we'll start a publishing house, and Winnipeg is one of those places where you can say that. You can say, well, we started a publishing house, and uh, everyone will go, awesome, that's good, good for you. <laughs> um, whereas I think, I think in kind of the centers of the culture, the reaction to that is, well, where's the book that you published? Um, <laughs> so it took us several years, actually, to publish our first book, which was, uh, which was a book about participatory economics um, by Michael Albert, a theorist in the US. But, um, so yeah, and it's been something that I've, I've really, I don't think of it as directly tied to my process as a writer, um, but I really get a lot of working with writers um, and editing writers. I think it's, um, it's a wonderful, collaborative process that I'm really interested in. And for the most part over those years, it's been um, kind of nonfiction that I've been um, uh, editing. And, uh, and lately it's been more fiction and poetry. And so yeah, it's, a, it's I just really, yeah, I enjoy it. It's good. I, like, I like books. I'm very fond of books. <laughs> I will ask you one more question, and then I will let you go okay. and cool. sing some songs. Um, Looking at the younger generation coming up, uh, are there any people that have your attention? Who do you like? Who, who do you like? Oh, listen? wow. That's a really good question. And kind of a depressing one for me to answer. <laughs> because I don't listen to a lot of music these days, in the last while. But I mean, there are so many um, great writers that, that, that are you know, emerging from, always emerging from, from out of nowhere, it seems. And uh, I'm totally blanking right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who do I like? <laughs> I don't know. Music, music-wise, um, it's my biggest influence has always been the people I played with, and uh, and and I think that that's kind of a fundamental thing. Like I think about, I don't know, Christine, my wife and I, uh, 
I mean, she's kind of my first editor and my primary um, editor, and the lines between what we write, it kind of blurs, like there's certain lines which she inserted into my work and vice versa, I think. But we've been teaching this course, uh, well, we've only done it once, of, of, uh, it's a songwriting course, and it uses the workshop style that, that you guys use here, which I guess was developed, kind of came out of Iowa Writers Workshop yeah, in the 30s. Well. And, and I think it's a model that works really well. And um, so we've been teaching these classes where it's, it's through the Music Conservatory in Manitoba, and so it's all these different people from all these different walks of life. So young people, old people, poor people, rich people, all the different kinds of people, um, and we had eight of them. And just the energy that was generated from that experience, everyone kind of collaborating on this song and then having a performance at the end where everyone had to play the songs that they wrote, that to me was the most inspiring thing of late that has happened to me. Um, just this idea that probably none of these people are going to be musicians, are going to put out records, but the idea that that um, that they've moved someone else, that they've been moved, and that they've expressed themselves and increased kind of the empathy in the world and and uh, been excited about making something. So I think that um, yeah, stripping aside all everything to do with the market and the industry and all of those things and kind of narrowing it down to that essential has been what's really excited me. Um. I heard Farron interview my old pal Farron, mm -hmm. and somebody made some comment about going into the studio, and she said, oh, everybody has a studio now. That's true. <laughs> Everyone does have a studio now. Do you yeah, think yeah. this is a good thing? Do you well, know, certainly it's the music? democratization of the means of production. Uh, <laughs> I can't complain about it. I think it's great. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but there's also, I think, um, here's what I worry about. I worry about it's just so unmediated that there's no editorial process like the ones that the creative writing program encourages. Um, for music, the editorial process for me is performing in front of someone and seeing what it does in the world. Um, and I feel like not enough of that happens. So I think to me the in-person performance is what really matters and, and that's the editorial process for a song. And uh, if you just put it on the internet indiscriminately, none of that, none of that happens. So um, there's less collaboration, even if it's ten people playing the song, because I think it can't exist in a vacuum, right? It has to, it has to resonate somewhere in the world, whether it's with one person or a thousand people. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you play some more music? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 